Hello ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me. I am the Foz and it's finally here. The first three cards of the 110 have been revealed. Now again, these cards are not available to be crafted and they cannot be used in ranked or tournaments. They can be used in friendly and as I understand correctly in trials. So what we're going to do going forward is I'm going to cover the cards individually, you know, a couple at a time in the videos. And then at the end of it all, once we have all the cards, I'm going to do probably like an abbreviated review to just go over the cards again and see how my opinions may change based on all the cards. Because you may look at a card and think, oh, it's only just pretty good. But then you see some other cards that work with it. And all of a sudden, hey, this card is crazy. So you never know. So we are starting off real simple. Base Born Recruit. It's a Dominion 1 drop. It's a human soldier. 1 mana, 1 aspect. 1-1 one, one with 2 speed. When it deals damage to a combat, in, in combat to a creature, put a weakness emblem on that creature. Wow. I really like the design on this guy, and I'll tell you why. It's a 1 drop for Dominion, and they were the only aspect, except Wisdom, that did not have 2 1 drops. They only had one, the Aristocrat. However, the developers designed a one drop that is essentially like a 2-2 two -two because it deals the one damage and then puts the weakness emblem on something. So it can basically trade with a 2-2, two -two, which is pretty good, without actually doing two damage to the face. So if you compare it with this guy, this stupid card, the Aristocrat... Okay, it's not a stupid card, but... You know, 3-1, right? Really, really nasty. You know, doing this much damage so early. This is how what I would consider a bad one drop. Badly designed one drop that does just too much face damage. But this one is, is different because, you know, early on it trades pretty well with pretty much any one drop. It can trade with Zombie Legionnaire, Lizard, Fireworker. That's even a two drop. So it trades pretty well. And... Later on, it's not completely useless because anything that kills this is going to get a debuff. So that's got nice synergy with things like Blood Seeking Mutant as well, where, you know, this will die to weaken something, and then the mutant comes down and, boom, finishes it off. So, looks good. I think if Dominion wants to try a more aggressive approach, this card is, I'd say, basically an auto-include. You know, it fights for the board pretty well early on and not useless later. This is what I want my one drops to be. This card right here. So kudos to the developers for really showing off what they can do with the design. This is exactly what I wanted to see. So yeah, uh, looking forward to it. It's a soldier. Does that mean anything for soldiers? Well, Order Dominion Soldiers is a deck that gets played sometimes. Maybe you'll throw this one in. You'll have any, like an extra one drop in addition to the uh, Steel Host Spearman. Yeah, maybe. It's not a bad card. So, hey, more synergy. So, I say this card could see play. I expect it to see play if the aggressive Dominion deck, like, if people want to try it out and if it's any good, it'll definitely see play there. Uh, in Trials, it should be alright. You know, it'll help you uh, survive the early game. If you need to. And it's not terrible later. Yeah, I think it's fine in Trials too. Good card overall. Nice job, developers. Now we move on to something a little bit bigger. Felix the Lightsworn. Legendary for order. Man, is this art badass. I can't believe it. Anyways, so Felix the Lightsworn introduces uh, one of the new mechanics in the game. And we'll get to that in a little bit. So let's look at the stats. Three mana, one aspect. 3-3 three, three with 2 speed. Yeah, stats are decent. Same as Vanguard. The cost is a little bit worse. But he's got some abilities. As long as he's on the support line. It essentially has a Namir's blessing on him. He cannot be targeted by hero powers, spells and all that stuff. Cool. And then at the start of your turn, move him to the front. That's actually really good if you think about it. Because when you play him, he has a support tag. So he goes to the support immediately. And then... You know, stays there, cannot be killed, almost cannot be killed by anything. And then he moves forward 
and can then attack something. So uh, it's interesting in that it can kind of act as a counter to something like Rage, since if you play this, the Rage can't kill it, right? They can't Fireball it because it's on the Sapporo. They would have to hold the Fireball, do nothing on their turn, and to then kill him. So looks really good. I think that alone makes it a pretty decent card, but there is more. So if you, ha this is the mechanic. If you have th these this many aspects, in this case, it's four aspects, two of them order. If you have that many aspects, he gets plus one, plus two. So it becomes a four, five. Pretty good. That's a pretty big body. So overall, I think the card's quite good. I like that it's kind of like the aggressive counter because it's a 3-3 three, three that can't be killed immediately, right? It has the chance to go to the front. So if you play him on turn 3, you're going to have him available to attack the next turn. Basically guaranteed. That's great. That means you can use him to establish a board presence against those annoying aggressive decks. And he's got a good body. And late game, if you are playing a 4-aspect deck, it's a 4-5. <laughs> That's no joke. That's that's a zombie giant with two speed. And you can also have the choice when you, you know, at the start of the turn he goes forward. You could move him back if you don't want him to be vulnerable or you could attack. So good flexibility. One more important thing is it is a knight. That matters quite a bit. Knights are almost good enough to have a deck of their own. You've already got like Namir, which is a top tier knight. Cavalry Field, another top tier. And then, well, that's basically it. The other knights are kind of whatever. But this one, this one is pretty good. The closest comparison is with the Angel Bless Knight. Same cost. The Angel Bless is one less attack. And this just it just ramps, right? Now, this guy's also a priest, but that's very minor synergy with Namir. So you trade away the the uh the ramp, but you get an extra attack and some protections from removal. And late game, it's a much more powerful card. So, Felix the Lightsworn looks really good to me, to be honest. It's a legendary, rightfully so. And I think Knights could seriously become a thing. With this guy in the ranks, with this guy, Namir, and Captain, and... Maybe there is another Knight coming as well. If there is one more decent Knight, that's it. That's all they need. Namir is going to become absolutely crazy because of that. Because of the ridiculous buffs he can give. Now, unfortunately, you cannot instill this guy, which is probably fair, <laughs> considering how good he can be. Uh, also, he is level 1, which means he dies the Harpy. But, if be, because he's protected when he's on the support row, this protection extends to protecting him from Harpy. I know it's weird. However, he moves forward at the start of your turn. That means if you played him first, before the Harpy, he will move forward and then the Harpy will kill him. But if the Harpy was played first, then the Harpy will go off, miss, because he's on, he's on the support row, and then he goes forward. It's kind of weird, but the Harpy vulnerability might occasionally come into play, though the Knights are for the most part level 2 and above. I imagine that this isn't going to be that big of a deal, but every now and again, it might hurt you. That's Harpy. That's how she is. Anyways, I think that's enough talking about this one card. Again, I think it's good. I expect to see it in some order decks, because I don't see why not. I mean, hell, even in the current Angels deck, they go to four aspects. They could toss this guy in and have, like, another giant threat that's a bit resistant to removal. And that works with Namir. Yeah, it's good. In Trials, it should be good as well. for Just good card, good late game, good er good early on. It's just, it's just nothing but good things about this card. And the last card, by far the most interesting. And I don't even know what to do with this one yet. The Void Touched Subordinate. A Wisdom card. A 2-drop. Two, 2 mana, 1 aspect. Zero three, sp zero 3 and 3 speed and can't attack. So it's a Relic Guard. It's basically a relic guard for two mana. But this is this is where this is where it starts to get fun. So, at the start of your turn, you decay two cards. Okay, that doesn't really seem to help you much, right? Unless you're trying to get some synergy with reanimate. But if 
you have a corruption aspect, whether because you played one, because you played Horizons and got one, or because you have Obelisk of Unity and you activated it, when this guy engages in combat with another creature, that creature becomes this, this thing. So if this guy, if your opponent attacks you with something, this guy blocks, whether he dies or not, doesn't matter. The creature that he blocked becomes a copy of Void Touched Subordinate, which means its stats get set to 0, 3. And in fact, the card literally turns into the Void Touch Subordinate. Now, the developers have confirmed that this only lasts while it's on the field. It says this, lasts, this effect lasts indefinitely while it's on the board. If you bounce it, the creature reverts back to what it was. I know, it's a bit of a bummer, but hey. So, the idea is, your opponent attacks, you block, you give him this card, which can no longer attack, and it mills him. Right? And unless he has a corruption aspect himself, his subordinate will not have this effect of turning your guys into more subordinates. So this is one of the funniest cards, if not the funniest card, they have designed so far. Transforming other minions into itself when they fight it. Man, what a great deterrent, right? Your opponent is going to be afraid to attack because he doesn't want his creatures to turn into this piece of crap. Which he can't use, which is also milling him. <laughs> Again, I'm I'm not entirely sure how to use this card in a deck. I guess if you wanted to run a mill deck, this is pretty good, right? Because it's a zero three with three speed, and you know if your opponent if it blocks anything, you're milling your opponent, and that's good. <laughs> now, you specifically have to be running Corruption as well. So it's obviously, you know, Corruption is the mill aspect anyway. So this is a Wisdom Corruption mill deck, right? Which is pretty cool. Although, um, traditionally, it was Nature that was the other aspect for milling because you had the bounce effect. You could bounce stuff like Vultures. You had Landslide. You could Landslide a Vulture to the top of your deck and then replay it. You had the Hero Power that could bounce as well. So I'm not sure how it's going to work with Wisdom. I can't really make a judgment on this card yet. It's too weird. It's just too weird. We would have to see more of the cards first before we can decide, you know, is this card playable? Well, it depends. Is milling going to become viable? Or is it just good enough for the whole, you attack me, well, you lose your creature basically, because it becomes this. The problem is that it this thing will mill you. So you can't just throw it into a control deck and protect yourself because milling yourself as a control deck is bad. So you have to be running Vulture, obviously, to recycle. So, I don't know. It, it, it's just really, really funny. The idea of turning, like, giant Dread Knights or Dragons into this <laughs> when they try to attack is pretty funny. I mean, more, more likely than not, your opponent will simply not attack because he doesn't want this to happen to him. Although he could maybe attack it with like a 1-1 one, one with 3 speed to upgrade his creature into this. But is that really an upgrade? I'm not sure if Void Touch Subordinate is a creature you want for long. I don't think so. I think you just want it to stall for a little bit while your opponent doesn't want to attack because he doesn't want this card. <laughs> Anyways, again, props to the developers for designing a card that legitimately made me laugh when I saw it. And the art is also so weird because you look at this thing, you think, wow, this looks really scary. Like, it's like a multi-headed snake. But not only does it do no damage, it can't even attack. It Its form of attack is to transform enemies into more of itself. I don't know, man. But anyways, it's it's pretty good. So I really like this. I, I hope we can make some use of it. But as it is... Like, if we just got this card and nothing else, I don't think it would uh, really see any play at this point. But although we do have some creative players in the game, so they might come up with something that I just can't think of right now. Uh, in Trials, uh, this is probably really bad because you, you don't want to mill yourself in Trials. Your deck is already smaller, and milling two cards a turn is a problem. I mean, your opponent could just not attack you. 
and you're on the clock yourself. So you probably don't want this card. And especially if you if you don't if your other aspect is not corruption, don't even don't even consider this card. It's useless. You have to be using it with corruption. So yeah, it's probably really bad <laughs> in trials. Anyways, uh, thanks for listening. That's for these three cards. We'll have three more next week, of course. And then three more, three more, three more until they release everything. And they will be releasing... They will be giving some of the players, like me, and like Jodo, I guess, and a few others, like access to an entire block from, from that aspect. So we'll be able to spoil more cards for you at the same time. So uh, get ready for watching multiple reviews from multiple people should be fun i'm also looking forward to see how different our opinions are on these cards and who's gonna be right who's gonna be wrong who's gonna look like a moron <clears throat> probably me <clears throat> and yeah it should be fun yeah right now of these three my favorite card is probably felix and my second favorite is this one and just because I don't know what to do with this one yet. Maybe maybe this will turn out to be absolutely amazing. We have 107 more cards to go. I mean, any literally anything can happen. And we got to see the new mechanic, like, you know, requiring you to have another aspect for certain effects. Which is really interesting because you could have a card that maybe is weak, but if you have different aspects, it gets stronger. And the more aspects you have, the more powerful the card becomes, so... That would be cool. I'd like to see something like that. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching and uh, see you in the next spoiler video. Take it easy, guys.